Hey friends, I'm back today with another Flashback Friday, and I'm super excited about it. Leo, however, he's a little on the tired side, so he's just chilling out back there, but he is still mentally and emotionally supporting me through this video, through this time. I am really excited to have you guys here today. If you have not already, I would love for you to like this video and subscribe to my channel because I would love to get to know you a little bit better. I feel like I've made some really good friends since starting this channel, and since I don't get out into the real world very often, it is really cool to get to talk to you guys on here. With that being said, the brand that I'm talking about today is Adept Cosmetics, and the palette that I'm talking about is the Seahorse palette. Now, I, I'm i going to be really honest with you guys. Adept is one of the few brands that I get really excited about their releases. I had a very hard time because I've been on a no life this whole year. I haven't bought anything. And well, like normal makeup stuff that I like ran out of but needed more of. But I held off on palettes. I didn't buy anything else. I've been trying very hard to be good and limit myself. It is extremely hard. <laughs> and Black Friday, Cyber Monday was the time that I crumbled and I did get a few things. But I have been selling stuff to like try and uh, trade off on this. So I have a bunch of Adept palettes coming. Not a bunch. I have some Adept palettes coming. I have some that I need to review. A lot of the Flashback Fridays that are coming are going to be Adept. And they're going to be like... What's the other brand I've got down there? Clarity. I've got... I don't even know. I've got a bunch of random stuff down there. It's going to feel like I have a lot of these brands because these were the... When I went through my palette declutter, my massive palette declutter, these are the ones that I just kept. And I'm trying to get through them and share them with you guys. I do my best to update as often as I possibly can. Sometimes it's once a week. Sometimes it's twice a week. Sometimes it's not at all. But it just has to do with whatever's going on in my life. For anybody that's curious, my uncle is back home. He is doing a lot better. And my mom is back home and doing a lot better. And my grandpa is also home and doing well. <laughs> so really, it's kind of like a... That was a super holiday. I'm really excited that I got to spend time with my loved ones. You never know how long you're going to have them for. I'm sorry I'm getting a little verbose here. But I was extremely happy to have a great Thanksgiving with them. Any day you get with your family is a lucky one. That all aside, this is what the packaging looks like. And I really like it. I even like that this sticks out even though I dislike things that stick up a little bit. I kind of wish there was a box to slide this into besides like the big one which is great for packaging and shipping because I don't it doesn't fit totally flat inside the drawer but aesthetically I really like it. I like the fade of colors. I like these little seahorses. Seahorses kind of remind me of my great grandma that passed away. I'm into it. When you open it up this is the color story and it kind of I should have used this at Easter I can sense it but that's okay. I don't I don't care. I was drawn to it. I had my husband pick and he was really drawn to it so that's where we are today. This is the color story and it is all special shades. They all shift. They all shine. They are beautiful. There's different I, I just, I can't, I don't think I can say anything negative about anything I've used from Adept. I know some people, uh, okay, let me just say this. I have pretty dry to sensitive skin, dry to, dry to normal skin, but very sensitive skin. So I don't, I don't deal with oily lids so much, but I know a lot of people that dislike the Adept formula. It's because they think it's kind of squishy, which some of the shadows definitely are in that range. And I know that longevity is increasing is kind of a thing for them, but I've never had that happen because I just don't have that, that skin, that type, I guess. So when I'm giving reviews, I'm giving them the best that I can for the skin that I have. I'm trying to keep that in mind for future reviews when I'm talking about it so I can just let you guys know, hey, this is what I have. If you have this, this, or this, you may consider doing something different. I think that if you use these with a, like a really dry mattifying primer, that you'd be fine. That's what I think. Me, well worth the money, especially if you can catch it on sale. I don't even know if they still have this. I'm going to be honest with you. As a Flashback Friday, I love this. I'm definitely not going to be decluttering it. I'm not going to sell it. I know a lot of times when I'm doing these videos, I end up selling the items that I'm talking about in them, but this is not going to be the case with this palette. It is definitely going to be staying with me near and dear to my heart. I'm going to be sharing some swatches with you guys, and I'm going to do multiple looks with this because I don't, I mean, it's not a matte palette, because it doesn't have mattes in the palette. So I'm going to be pulling in other palettes as like a guest appearance so I can really make the most out of this, get a lot of the special shades onto my eyes so you can see them besides just the swatches. And I do think I am going to be changing my swatching format. I don't know if I will be doing it with this video, but typically I do my swatches all at one time on my arm and I am kind of thinking about switching to just single swatches on my hand or I may do single swatches on my hand and then separately swatch it all on my arm. I'm unsure what I'm going to do moving forward. Let me know if you have a preference. Would you like to see single hand swatches here? Or do you like seeing all the swatches on my arm at one time? Or are you okay with seeing swatches like on my arm at one time later? Or are you okay with all the swatches on my hand, oh my gosh, amalgamated together in a picture? That's a hot mess. Tell me how you prefer your swatches. I'd just be really curious to know. Okay, that got a little chatty, but that's okay. We're going to move forward. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, we're going to start at the top with the first shade that is called Courtship. And, of course, as always, I am going to be doing these swatches on dry, uh, dry, dead, dull, <laughs> un, you know, anything skin. And I am just going to start right here. 
I probably should put lotion on sometimes because I'm dry. I definitely have a shadow like this from other brands. Will I ever get tired of a shadow like this? No, definitely not. We've got some of that beautiful kind of uh, bluish green, like minty shade with a gold flip. And also we've got pink and purple and it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Never tired of it. The next shadow is called Big Belly. Uh, to be clear, that first shadow was crumbly, but not as crumbly as some of these other uh, formulas get. This one right here is Big Belly, and it's actually very similar to the first one, but not crumbly. Very smooth and satiny. Very similar. Yeah, okay. They're really close to each other, in my opinion. I see the same colors, just a different finish. The next shadow is called Tiger Tail. Please excuse my phone. Ooh, damn. Should have used this differently. <laughs> Am I screwed up? Also, I need to start putting these closer together before I end up running out of space. I can see that already. You guys may hear my cat sneezing in the background. <laughs> He's just all huffy today. This is kind of a purple based green shifting blue shadow. It does have a really intense, like, gold flip and also pink. I don't know what all you guys are getting. It is stunning. The next shade is called Giraffe. Now, this is one that I'm going to say I would definitely use with a with an eyeshadow primer. I use this today on my eyes. And while you can use it without it, I think it will just be better served with one. It's just a, a very crumbly but very impactful formula. Now, like, you can smooth it. I don't know if you're able to see me smoothing it as I'm going, but... If you want that kind of chunky appearance without the smooth down, glue, not glue, but like primer or glitter glue, whichever. Um, that is kind of a purple to blue to green to gold. It's it's funny because it's like in the same vein as these other ones, but it is very different. I want to say the base on it is like a periwinkle shade as opposed to the others. What is it, buddy? Are you okay? He's okay, I promise you. Next shadow is called Low Crown. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Him's having a rough day. Him needs treats. I'm going to treat him when I get it done with this. This is a gorgeous shade. And in fact, I had one that was sort of similar to this at one point that I had gotten rid of. But now I'm really... And I, I regretted it. I didn't really want to sell it. <laughs> um, but now I've got this in here, so I'm quite happy. This is like a very soft, subtle purple that has a gold shift. It also has a bit of pink to it. Maybe a hint of blue. Mm, -na -na -na. What's his name? I'm sure that this is probably Superman themed or something like that. They do a lot of Superman stuff. That's my guess. But I never... I mean, I did watch some Superman when I was young. But it's been, it's been a hot minute. This is a really beautiful blue that shifts into purple. It does have maybe a hint of like a light green to it, but it's a hint. Very pretty shade. The next one is called Figmy Thorny. Figmy Thorny? <laughs> Truthfully, I'm not as into light blue shadows. I used to use them a lot when I was like 15 and I did not use them well. And it's kind of given me an aversion to them. This is another kind of light blue that shifts purple. It almost looks like I got a duplicate, but it is less, I don't know, it's slightly different. Slightly different, very similar. Maybe I got a duplicate. They look different in the pan, so I don't know. Uh, the next one, uh, next one is called Tyro. It's kind of a marbled pan. I wish I had a better way to pick it up, but I just don't. Other than to smish it together, which makes me sad, but I don't know how you would pick that up otherwise. And it ends up being kind of like a soft ballet slipper pink with a bit of purple and blue to it. Very interesting shade. Uh, again, not one of my favorites. I'm just not crazy about like light pinks. That's just where I sit on it. I think it's because my skin is like not the right shade for it. God, I don't think I'm going to have enough room for the rest of these. <sighs> Alright, the next one is called False Eye. That's a very, very soft green the lightest. It's like almost a white based green luminescent type of shade. Next one is called Narrow Bellied. That's pretty. And 
and that's a beautiful green that has a bit of flash of gold to it. These would be just great at Easter. I'm serious. Like, from the second I had looked at this, I was like, Easter! <laughs> the next shadow is called Long Snout. Anybody else get this vibe? It's like what I wish would have happened in the Give Me Glow palette. Their Easter palette that they did. And then even Clarity did an Easter palette that I really liked, but it, I don't know, there was hits and misses with that formula-wise. I liked it, but a lot of people did not. Like, if those two palettes had a baby, they could have gone here. Anyway, this is kind of an orange that goes gold and a little bit green. Super pretty. Next one is called Paradoxical. Let me just tell you, I'm always going to love shadows that look like this for life. It's kind of a white, maybe an iridescent based or gray based. Pink, orange, gold, green. Stunning. Next one is Sindo. I don't think I can fit these all. Which sucks. And then I'm going to go over the textures with you guys. Pretty much everything but that one shadow giraffe has been fairly smooth to use. It's similar to the other, but it does it does have more of a blue and purple to it as well, rather than the green undertone. Next one is called Ponto, possibly. Uh, Ponto has the same texture as Giraffe. Keep that in mind. I'm, I'm scared to pick this up. Ooh. Definitely on the flaky side. You can kind of like flake and mash. <laughs> But just keep in mind, if you'd rather not flake and mash, and I do think that if you have more sensitive eyes, and I do, you have to be careful doing that, just use a primer and just place them. It's a beautiful kind of soft, well, no, it's not soft, it's, a, it's, it's, it's vibrant. It's like a magenta pink that goes gold and green and orange, and it's, it's, it's stunning. I'm like, how can I ever get this? How can I get more flakes? The last shade is called Soft Coral. And it's more of the texture of tiger tail. Uh, it is definitely more smooth, but it still has those kind of bigger particles. I wouldn't necessarily straight out call them glitter, but they look like glitter on the finish. Um, and that is a pink based green shifting blue, purple, and yellow. Very, very pretty. Honestly, if I were to do something I'd probably declutter this entire middle row just because I don't I'm not drawn to them as much as the rest of it but it is overall a very pretty palette taking this light blue shade from actually that is a nomad cosmetics palette which i'm pulling in because i need some matte shadows and that's actually from their polar express palette that came out just recently and i have been loving it especially the matte shades are fantastic but i'm just telling you the packaging is glorious but i'm just taking that into my crease and spreading it above it as well i'm just taking that same shadow and putting it down underneath my lash line on both sides and then I'm going to be going into that deep blue shade and I'm going to be stamping it into my outer V and then kind of blending it out. And I'll do the same thing on the other side, just stamping it and blending it out. And then I'll take the same shadow down below about halfway to the middle of my eye area. I'm going to go into the seahorse palette using that bottom left shade and I'm going to just push that all over my lid. Now at this point I don't have any eye primer on or anything like that. I just want to compare the performance between using my finger and using a brush which you can see now I'm using a brush. There's no primer on that side. 
and I do take it all the way out, cover the whole lid, and I did try to use it under my lash line, but I didn't like it, so I used my finger. I'm gonna grab that middle shade right there, and I'm just gonna pop that into my inner tear duct area on both of my eyes. And this is what the completed look looks like when I'm just kind of trying to catch different lighting situations in my room for you guys to see it. Now I'm gonna be pulling that middle shade at the top, which is gorgeous, and I'm gonna be popping that on my lid. I did end up using a brush. I think in all reality, I probably should have just used like an eyeshadow primer or base of some sort, maybe left my foundation tacky. While this does look really beautiful, I do think it would have been far more impactful had I done that. And I just took it on both sides and I put it all over the lid. I didn't, I mean, I wasn't precise about it. I wasn't trying to be, you know, perfect or anything like that. And I did the same thing down below. Nothing fancy, just sliding it on there. Now I'm taking a shade from the Chicago Speakeasy palette, and it's that light green kind of pistachio-ish color from the top. Then I'm taking the mid-tone purple, and I'm putting it in my outer V and into the crease, and I do the same thing down below my eyes. And then I'm going to just take this deepest purple shade, it's kind of like a plumish shade, and pop it into my outer V and really work it into the outside and underneath of my lash line area. And this is what it looks like, kind of spinning around in my different lights in my room. But now I'm going to be taking that shadow right there and popping it into my inner tear ducts, both of them a little bit more, and that orange shade all over the lid. Now, I do use this without a primer yet again, and I end up deciding that I don't think that it is, like, deep enough, so I go back in with a brush. I get that this might be kind of pointless, but I am going to take this into my crease and kind of smooth everything out before I put some other colors down. So I'm just putting it slightly above, not being precise at all, same down below. Then I'm going to be taking this mid-tone kind of, ugh, it's orangish-brownish, it's gorgeous, it's like one of my favorite colors in that palette, and I'm moving that into my crease, and I'm also going to put it a little bit out into my outer V and down below my lash line, and because I'm extra, I'm picking up both of those shades, and I'm going to put them into my outer V, and I'm really working those in, trying to blend them out very well, also putting them down below in my lash line area. I'm going back into this shadow that I originally used and I'm going to tell you this was a process. I actually ended up putting an eye primer on because I just felt like it wasn't popping enough. This shadow and I went ahead and I put it just in the very center kind of to marry everything and give it a little pizzazz. And this is the look in different lights within my room. Now I'm using the Melt Vita palette and using that green shade and I'm placing it all into my crease. And I will also take it down below my lash line and work it all the way to my inner corner. Now I'm going to pick up the shade Giraffe, and this is a very crumbly type of formula. You can press and smooth it out on your lid, but I did not want to do that. I actually used a primer, and you can tell because it's sticking really well, but using the brush was a little bit more difficult to do. And then I'm taking Paradoxical, and I'm putting it into my inner corner one more time. And this is what the look looks like when I am done, and just showing you my different lighting in my room. I could keep using this forever and ever and not get tired of it, but let me just dispel any kind of suspense that there might be. I am 100% keeping this palette. I really wish that I had time to use every single shadow and just show you what it looks like. I don't know if anybody's interested in that. If you are really, if anybody out there is interested in seeing me like one and done each of these over a long period of time, because I'm not one of those that can like just swipe it off, put on another look and swipe it off and put on another look without irritating the shit out of my eyes, holler at your girl. I would be happy to do it. It's just going to take time and I'll have to do it like side by side by side by side by side. Also, I've been trying to change up how I'm doing the tutorial part. Not that I'm really anybody to be teaching anything, but I have been trying to change it. So if you like that format better when I'm just kind of voiceovering it very quickly rather than talking through the whole thing let me know because I like may not be what you guys like and I'd love to know what you guys think about it with that being said I definitely love this palette I think the seahorse palette from Adept is gorgeous I did get some other palettes from them over Black Friday because they did have some great deals going on and I I just love this color story and it's not like okay personally I think this would be even better at like Easter time but these shifty shades are just so versatile you can use them with anything and use them year-round so I'm not disappointed I really like it it's not going anywhere I will not be getting rid of it the only thing I thought about Ooh, I put my finger in one of them. <laughs> the only thing I thought about kind of doing is maybe just taking my favorite shades from some of these palettes and keeping those and then selling the rest of them. I'm not sure what I'll do. Maybe down the line I will do that right now. I'm just going to hang on to what I like and try and keep going through stuff. And I hope that everybody is staying safe and healthy and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.